Deep Talk with Mr. Henry. And secondly, if um, if I'd grown up in a home that had instruments, probably like a guitar, piano, or that kind of environment, probably I would have been a musician. favorite I didn't get a chance to get to know these things. Is is this as a result of how you've grown up, how you've been brought up, or ladies and gentlemen, I have Alan Tonics on on the deep talk and. Oh, Chiwudi, the music is part of him. He breathes music. And sometimes I feel like one of his favorite songs, personally, Yengaye, is Sunday. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Henry. I'm glad to be here. This is as a result of you being born in a family that, um, that has access to such instruments or is a product of hustle? Well, um, I feel like um, hustle in music. Mm really helps a lot on the business side of things yeah but talent is called talent because you're born with it you're born with it though mm -hmm. it can be nurtured oh yeah and horned oh, yeah and, and improved yeah so to answer your earlier question <laughs> yeah uh, for example i have mm. I, I grew up with, with two brothers okay um, um, our sister is much younger she was born much later mm. and we all were exposed to the same things but only mm. i picked it up okay so you might have exposure and yeah. access but it's not the interest you have in you exactly if you don't mm -hmm. have that interest you may not still you know so out of all of us it was me that really picked interest and picked it at up. what age does it start coming out for you that you know i'm i'm interested in music i mean i started learning guitar when i was in p7 wow uh, so I didn't learn on pressure, like go to a, a music mm. school or what. My mom used to play since we were young. Your mom? Yes. Wow. So if we're having like prayer at home, mm -hmm. she play like sing the gospel. At Christmas, we sing some yeah. Christmas carols. So we watched her playing. Mm. Uh, some of her brothers also used to play. Yeah. So it was something. Usually basically, like we grew up with a guitar at home, but mm. we just never bothered Yeah. until much later. So I picked interest from like 
P7. I, I think it was uh, mm -hmm. it was a thing my mom tried to put in me, like mm -hmm. in that P7 after exams. Right? Yes, yes, yes. To try and give me something mm -hmm. to do, not to just be around being stubborn. Be. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. W w when you now, you know, nurtured out as a kid who is interested in music, how much did mommy support your career? Actually, or, or your journey, your interest, yeah. Uh, a story that I think I've never told. Mm -hmm. uh, in my form two, mm -hmm. I think I had a, a couple of friends. That's in Tari School. At Budo. At Budo, yeah. Yes. They used to rap. Oh. Used to gospel rap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From fellowship, I remember we had mm -hmm. songs we used to do not. Tell me what I can I can I do when I rap. Ding mm -hmm. ding till not. Tell me what I can I can I do when I rap. So we had like some mm -hmm. gospel artists who were really you mm -hmm. know obsessed with from the states and all that. Mm -hmm. And so these guys were really into rap. So I used to play the guitar. So so we we, we formed a group called Click to Christ C two C. That's dope. And now C two C. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. Click to Christ. Yeah. It makes me think of B to C. Yeah. So you can, you can imagine when I first C saw B to C. C. Oh yeah. I remember my click in form two called C to C. Yeah, at Budo. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, one of my friends' dads was really supportive. Mm -hmm. I remember we went to VCL Studios mm. to record an album. Oh yeah. And it was absolute crap because <laughs> that. <laughs> How many songs were on it? Do you remember? Like five. Oh wow. But the quality was really. Uh, audio production wasn't really their strong suit. Mm -hmm. They should have stuck to video. Yeah. But we're paying, so they did it anyway, and we didn't know better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so C2C. Yo, yes. We do the album, but it was... Eh. Mm -hmm. So, but because we're doing gospel music, and my yes. mom is a born-again Christian. Oh, yeah. So she was really interested in, in supporting. Uh, one of my friend's dad was also mm. uh, quite supportive. Mm. Uh, he's the one that had, you know, financed mm. and taken us to... to, to to um, VCL. Oh, yeah. So somehow, I don't remember exactly how, mm. but my mom took us to Steve Jean. I remember his studios, A1 Studios. What's a case You're yeah, the second Avenue. person to tell me this. Nav, your same story. They also took him to Steve Jean. Now you also took him to Steve Jean. Which year are we talking about? This is like 2003? Yes, should be. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I think then I was like in Form 3. Okay. And in that strange twist of fate, mm -hmm. DJ Bobby was in the studio when we were recording. Oh, yeah. That song. Of course, by then I didn't know who he was. Yeah. Uh, but of course, as the story goes, much later we met. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, wait, this is it. And we're great friends today. Mm -hmm. But yes, so we went to Steve Jean and we recorded a song called Forgive Me. And I remember it was a whole different experience from mm -hmm. the CL. Yeah. I think that was my first time to see, like, remember those first marks mm. that came that were glass and yes, transparent? Yes, yes, yes. Steve's stuff was like state of the art. Big up on yourself, Steve Jean. Yeah. And he had like state of the art stuff. I mean, he, had, he was like, uh, he had the show was going. Oh, yeah. He had those dope selicas with like that. Spider doors that open like this <laughs> right there when you get to the studio. He's always been like that. Yeah. It was a good experience. And mm. he was friendly oh, yeah. and cool. And it was a good experience. And uh, yes, yeah, so from that, it gave me a glimpse of, and I picked oh, yeah. interest in production from that mm. experience, watching the process. Yeah. I picked an interest in production. So, but um, of course, by after Form 3, then I was going to be a candidate, so I first put that stuff aside. And you became serious with books. Yes. Uh, I mean, after Form 4, I didn't go back to Buddha, I went to Ontario. Mm -hmm. Which became a whole other story of its own now. Now you go to Mbarara. What an kaftira kazu. Ah, vana vana remuntira kazu. So anyway, uh, you do now do form five. Mm. Uh, form, but deep down you thought you're gonna be an artist because at that moment your mind tells you a lot of things. As a young man, you know you could be a pro probably a professional basketballer. You could be a mm. doctor, footballer. Uh, probably a banker, a lot of things. What was in your mind then? Honestly, I was going to be a lawyer. Ooh. Music was fun for me. Mm -hmm. Why? I yeah. felt like the kind of music I liked and the kind of vibe I had mm. was so different from what Tugandans were singing. When like the training artist was, I remember at that time, 
was mm-hmm. like what red banton yeah there was chameleons it, it, it wasn't really I, I wasn't seeing myself mm. you know the ugandan setup yeah I, I, I couldn't see you know mm. if that's what people were vibing to definitely yeah. had no chance <laughs> <laughs> you, know? you didn't even think you would sing in luganda which artists were you listening to what kind of music was on your playlist uh, in then? all level honestly mm. i think in all level that ugandan artists i listened to was peter miles oh yeah um blue three At that time there was rockers rockers blue three had frisky hitaji ban yeah that was the music exactly so that's what i was you know but what michael rose oh yeah michael rose yeah um, but what other you know even if they don't have to be ugandan but what other oh i was definitely mm-hmm. messing a lot i used to mm, feel craig david at that point was yes. on fire you know was on fire. craig david um uh I think nameless came later since yeah, that was 25 that was 2005 yeah nameless came mm. so those Craig David there was of course the guy was always been bad R Kelly I was waiting you know, for you to say that you know he's always been <laughs> yeah. yeah then of course that's the time the Sean Pauls were doing baby boy Sean Dapal yo <laughs> so I was really yeah. mm. and funny enough uh in uh and uh all level mm. I was also so much into hip hop DMX what <laughs> Guys, you, you didn't know that. <laughs> wow. We used to uh we're crazy about DMX, Busta yeah. Rhymes. Yeah. So that was the vibe. Fast forward now. To After Antari, when, when when do you now hit studio and you see yourself becoming an artist now? Honestly, I think I it was just every st- you know like mm-hmm. it, it makes me understand someone they say I know you're supposed to have a big picture. Mm-hmm. But taking it a day at a time. Yeah. So I was literally taking it a day at a time, not intentionally. Yeah. It just wasn't something I was thinking about mm-hmm. where I was just doing what I need what I want to do now mm-hmm. in the moment. Yeah. And because I had picked interest in a production at Steve's. So when I go to Ntari, mm-hmm. Ntari had this um different thing about the culture mm-hmm. that every evening you could leave school and go out. Which was not there at Budo. Because of that thing. (laughs) (laughs) Which wasn't at Budo. It wasn't, yeah. So, I don't know what other people would go do their own things, but what I would do, Mm. I looked for like guys who had studios around Mbara. Mbara? Yes. Yes. Before that road was stomach, that road had dust. I know. You guy, from Uh, Standbeek up to the gate. But I think we were resistant. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes. So you used to walk. I'm sure right now, yeah, we used to walk. Uh, actually the, the the guy used to mm. he had a studio in Revy Corner. Oh my god, that's now the other way. Yes. This other side, yeah. Yes. Mm. So there were two guys. There was a guy called Hamis. He mm. used to do production for a church. Mm-hmm. And uh then Don Balam, of course. Who, oh yeah, Don Balam. Yes, was like that. Mm. Like the dopest guy there in terms of production. Yes. So I just used to go to the studio and mm. watch. Mm. And watch. Eventually, mm. I had my mom buy me a computer. Oh yeah. For production purposes. <laughs> then I got Chibala Fruity Loops. <laughs> man. Some of you don't know Fruity Loops, man. Some of you don't know. Uh-huh. So you get the Chibala. When I got Fruity Loops, bro. Mm-hmm. I was obsessed. Yeah. Every day I just ran. I used to my routine was mm. after class, class. jogged to, 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 to go home, turn on Chibala, my headphones on. Yeah. Start you know, messing about. Mm. Eat some food, jog, then go. Mm. Do a couple of push-ups, yeah. shower, preps every day. So then I started uh, mm. having like beats that I take to the producer. Like mm-hmm, I have mm-hmm. a beat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want to record it. They listen, what, what, you know. Mm. And my stuff wasn't. It had a lot of had influences. Yes, yeah. And you know they say garbage in, garbage out. So what you put in your head mm. will influence what comes out of you. Definitely. So I had some influences, and my stuff wasn't bad, but it was, um, mm. I mean, uh, novice. So I mean, I tried out a couple of stuff, and then a stroke of luck, I guess, hit mm-hmm. when they brought um, Palmer Ward's Western yes. launch. Yes. Yes. And of course, who did they go to? To artists, they go to Don Bala, mm-hmm. the guy who has now become like my buddy. Yeah. Proper, proper. He had City Juice by then. He had that song. Uh, yes. 
So, he is running in the list of artists. Mm. You didn't have a song out yet. No. Like, uh, a, a I had like songs that I produced songs. myself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And of course, that was the first time I met all these other artists. Yeah. Uh, I remember we were Juliana, um, uh, Michael Rose, Ngoni, mm. Mm. who were like at that point, because at that point Ngoni was like trending. They had Diggy, Nasima, Gwe, all those songs. And they yeah. had done um, Sweet Lady. Sweet Lady. Mm. I, was, I was really obsessed with Sweet Lady, the production. Mm. Now I was so curious and inquisitive about production. Yes. I was really critiquing the production a lot when songs would come out. I'd be listening to the beat, the drums, mm-hmm. the, since in my head I'd be imagining mm. how I would do it, y- you know? Yeah. And that's how I met AD. Good enough. Yeah. Backstage, one yeah. of those. And of course I shot my shot. I said, bro, uh, can't we just produce for me one song at least? And he was like, okay. Mm-hmm. Your stuff is not bad, but you finish school, you help me. All okay. That. I want a laza. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah, people are brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, na laza. Yes. Yeah. Let me just. And you're doing what combination now? What entire arts? At the I was doing uh, physics, economics, math, hmm. fine art. Pam! Yeah, Pam. Okay. And now I went to entire, you know, I wanted to do arts. Yeah. And at Budo, they had given me the course I wanted, but my parents wanted me to look to the sciences. Oh, yeah. So then they. They took you to entire to do something. Were you mad at them for doing that or I mean I was, but it is what it is. I don't know if anybody has ever asked you this question, but mm. between Tari and Budo, mm. where did you feel like um this was school for me? I think they are no offense, Budonians or it's trying to Ntari. prepare yeah. a timberland. And a dope Nike shoe because they're both dope in their own ways. Yeah, they are not. The things I learned from Tari mm. and my experience from Tari is very different from Budo. The things I learned from Budo, and I wouldn't. I think it's not easy. Mm. I think having an experience of both, yeah, is an advantage. True. I feel like. Uh, there was something, Terry had something else about mm. the element of the controlled freedom and being responsible for yourself mm-hmm. a bit. Eh? And that slight exposure before campus yeah. I think kind of reduces the shock a bit. When you get to campus, world, yeah. yeah. So, and I mean, if I wasn't in Terry, for example, I doubt I would have never I ever met, like, I would have never been at the Palm Awards oh, yeah. if I was oh, yeah. at Budo, definitely. Probably wouldn't be the artist today, yeah. Even possible, I would have never met AD. Yes. I would have never, you guess. Yes, yes, yes. It would have been a totally different story. So, Mm -hmm. inevitably, as my parents tried to make me do sciences, Mm -hmm. they made me do music. (laughs) They turned you into an artist. Now, fast forward. Mm. So, you get into vacation. You hit up AD? Actually, I first hit up Lillian. Lillian. Mbabazi. OG. OG. Mm. The one I sang, the Baron. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Lillian was Lillian Luwaga because mm. we used to you know jump together mm. in high school in, the, in Budo at, in the band and all that mm. so I hit her up mm-hmm. to like hey you guys I've been doing stuff but now I do beats mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of course this was all new to them yeah I'd, I'd really moved steps yeah in the in the game I, I knew DJs I met these people mm. and, and now new production I was, yeah I was quite decent in fact, Vera and Ange, we went to Studio AD. We went with a track. That I, went with a, I went with a track, though he redid it. Okay. But I but went, came went with my like own. The, the, the idea. backbone, the idea. Yes. Mm. So he redid it. So <coughs> in my mind, I was just going to put vocals on. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I hit Lillian up and, you know, told her I have this track. You can do a song, blah, blah, blah. And then called AD and mm-hmm. we boomed, did the jam. And honestly, we didn't know what was going to come next. We just, like, again, I said, yeah, day by day, step by step. <laughs> you get the song from studio. Mm. How does it get to the media? And when, what happens the first time you hear that song playing on radio? That's the story now. 
when we get the song from studio, I just went home, played mm. it for my friends, yes, my family, <laughs> your mom, my classmates, yes, <laughs> and that was it. Mm -hmm. After like one month, <laughs> one month, he calls me, yeah, Jago. yeah, I said, what do you mean? Mm. Say, bro, you can just have a song and just, mm. but you see, I had zero experience, oh, and yeah. this brings me back to the to the interview I had recently where I was telling someone that was asking me what's one of your regrets mm. one of the, I told him I wish that much earlier on in my career I'd had a proper manager yeah you get because the content was there yeah but it was like a blind man feeling mm. and when you hit the ball you open you mm. you are key mm. if you're not you know yeah so it was actually, uh, he did pretty much did all that stuff. And he yeah. did what he could, considering yeah. that he wasn't a manager, he was a producer, he was an artist as well. Yes, he has yes. his own stuff to do. Yeah. Now he has to do yours, you're bleak. Mm. So I remember AD, just, uh, he would simply give me instructions. Say, okay. I remember he told me to go to Mukasaka, or take the song to a guy called DJ Momo. Rip, rest in peace, he passed on. But uh, yeah, that was like the first guy. And then other dj it had a video then the song had you showed the video we hadn't okay and then dj bobby uh -huh. playing clubs now this is where i meet dj bobby again again and I'm like, <laughs> yeah this is the guy is so informed yeah and i remember when dj bobby played the song mm -hmm. in club silk he was super excited he was like yo mm. yeah the guy played it like 10 times in the club. Mm. And DJ Bobby became my friend like from that day up to now. Mm -hmm. We became tight. He was really cool about it. But when we took the songs to radios. Radio stations then. It was rejection after rejection. What were they telling you? It wasn't good enough a song? Or mm. Temuina sent it. No, actually, those days it wasn't about money. Mm. They would just critic on the quality. Wow. The art. And the, how can I call it? The target audience maybe. Mm. Them. They, I don't remember us ever paying any money at radio. Mm. Maybe DJs, you'd pay something. Mm. But radios really, they would reject you on principle that your stuff is just not the quality that they want to represent out there mm. for the industry. Uh, I remember radios like, they had Akasengeja, mm -hmm. where they would say, Ruita, uh -huh. mm. uh, Those days, Sanyo FM had like a box of <laughs> CDs which were rejected. People yeah. used, I remember artists would go to Sanyo FM and they're like this. Yeah. <laughs> the guy would be like, headmaster. Wait, Jango. Ha! Genda Yogo. Go to Logo Kurumi. Yes. Yeah. To go there and they accept your song, mm. you feel like you've graduated, bro. Yeah. Because yeah. they were so strict about the quality of the music. Yeah. People used to get. Go and do, go and do voice practice again. Oh, wow. Go and use another producer. Wow. It will be your queen, but them. Yeah, it's not your calling. Just don't waste your time. They will straight for it. Strangely enough, mm. the station that was most famous for rejecting songs is the only one that accepted my song. The only one. It wasn't the first one we went to. Yeah. But all the stations said, ah, uh, mm. zungu. Uh, and the style, I'm an again in the style. Tebaji tegeda, tebaja. What is it? No, imba, imba younger mama mia. Ola ngo imba budoroti. I said, bro, these are two different things. Yeah. Of course, Eddie was frustrated. Mm. He was frustrated and was like, bro, what's wrong with people? Like, mm. but, um. When Sanyo FM picked it up, they went. I mean, I remember the guy listened like for 30 seconds. And he was like, bro, this, this is, is the song. This is it. Power play, power play was like mad. After like a month, then all the other radio started calling. They picked it up. They picked it up because they were hearing the reaction it was getting yes. from people. Yeah. Remember DJ Bobby had loved it. He was mm. pumping it in Club Silk. Yes. Momo had picked it up, was pumping it in Club Silk. Which artists reached out to you first, besides AD? You said that Wakobi Yimba. Mm. If you remember. 
first of all, I was not as accessible mm. because I wasn't in those circles. I yeah. was at school. Yeah. So I was always at campus mm. or hostel. Yeah. Or even this when the song is playing. Yes. Mobs. Mobs. Okay. Yes. Mm. So I didn't really have a chance to mm. mingle with artists much at that point. But um, then he said, you know what? Let's mm. do a video. Mm. And I neither had the money nor the idea how to start. Yeah. Which he facilitated. Eddie? Yes. Wow. Remember, it was Medimens. He yeah. showed the video. Mm. It was a very cheap video. If I tell you the price, you'll laugh, so I won't say it. <laughs> like 200K <laughs> then? <laughs> 500k are we doing about like yeah, 1m yeah, yeah. i think it was like it must have been like five like a total of like 500k wow yeah. but the way you're holding the fence then <laughs> <laughs> whoa uh, there was a time um i think in my form one they played that song we had a trade fair um it was in kakoba i think oh 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 that jam was huge. You don't know that. And it was so strange yeah. because it shows it really reminds me how much the industry has changed. Yeah. That from that point it moved organically mm. without even all the way to MTV base. Yes. Without Payola, without it was just people would say the song is good. Yeah. Give it a chance. Even though it was resisted at first for being different. Yes. And the only thing I faulted that our industry was that people in the media were so close-minded mm. they they like stuck to the same thing they've known for the last 20 Fagara years mama mia. it is like the same Fagara thing they yeah. feel it should be the same so they're not open to new things so it was really for pushing oh yeah thankfully the other advantage they have media had mm. is that Paolo couldn't help you because people were principled about the quality of that stuff yeah yeah so you're not going to bring crap mm. and you think we'll just play it because you know no which is not the case today. Ah, uh, today. Biachuka. Bro. Anything goes. Anything goes. You could sing like, I don't know. And they played like, you don't know. Yeah. You just have the cash. Or, if you're a chick, you could show some skin and trend. You're a guy, at that moment, mm. now when the song is being played um, mm. all over the country, do you feel like an artist? Do you feel like a star? Honestly, Have you made the decision to become an artist? or At that moment, I yeah. am still on a bus, but I'm not sure where the destination <laughs> is. At school, you okay, just, I'm like on a yeah. roller coaster, mm. having fun. <laughs> yeah. Enjoying. Mm. Because everything was a surprise. Everything was a discovery. Yes. Everything was new. Mm. Everything was, you know? Yeah. Nothing was boring. Yeah. Everything was, you know? Of course, it came with its own challenges. Mm. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, my friends at campus were really excited and stuff. Of course, then they came the thing of not knowing what to do when people recognize you and start pointing. Because you, you're not used to that. You're used to your yeah. own private stuff. But now, you know... And you don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Be a bit shy. Mm. People mistake shyness for being proud. Oh, yeah. So, like, you're not the, how can I call it? You know the type who is, like, yeah. so, yeah. you know, you're laid back. Yet, like, it's so a sour. Like, exactly. You know the type where you're sour and you're soft-spoken reserve. Mm. And say, actually, because you're Rosa, like Rosa Wakabinho. Kumbe yo now abaku gira ku now but yeah 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 now but yeah it's so it was weird like how to handle it mm. a bit frustrating but um I mean at that point once it got to um when I was nominated for the Palm Award mm. and Eddie said you know what I told you I came back alone I said you we manina bunge yeah then I brought in Suvisa. And same thing. Yeah. The same exact process, pretty much. And of course, once I won the Palm Award, then mm -hmm. it changed all these people's minds to actually give me attention yeah. now. Yeah. And then Subiza was also, you know, success. And then said, I told you know, and then I brought in Yenze. Yeah. Yeah. And at that point, that's when they said, you know, you need someone more dedicated to try and 
do like some sort of management for you and it can't be me because now you need more than but kuyenze had you started like getting now real gigs getting money being paid for your craft yeah mm. i had i had my first gigs of course were gotten by ad mm. and i remember a guy called bills who told them yeah I met him recently in fact at, at Next Media a mm. couple of days ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I always find like all the people I met way back were still mm-hmm. friends. And I like that about myself. I mm. don't You don't forget your people. No. And Bills I remember gave me one of the first gigs plus a guy called Chris. Mm. Chris Lubo from CBS. Oh wow. It was a wedding and it was at Tova Cricket Oval. <laughs> <laughs> a wedding at Cricket Oval. Hey. That must have been a huge one. Mm. What up there? Mm. Yeah, and he gave me was it 200k? Was it? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take a quick break. We are in the <laughs> life of uh, Alan Tonics. Is it a blessing or it's actually talent? Let's take a quick break when we come back. We're diving into now how he gets to meet radio and Weasel, how he gets to be the kind of person that he is. Why he's not publicly dating? Does he have any children? Maybe they have you never know. My name is Mr. Henry Tovao. The Deep Talk with Mr. Henry.